Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is time for the Italian GP, it's time for Magello of our Moto3 career mode. So unfortunately the heavens opened in the qualifying and I had a dreadful time so I'm hoping we can recover from 18th on the grid to a decent position. We've got some objectives to do today. Oh, look at them all swinging across to the right hand side. We need to not only stay ahead of Tatsuki Suzuki, we need to beat Daniel Holgado as well, which is a tall order when you're starting from 18th on the grid. So I do believe the difficulty's been pushed down to about 110%. Oh, 105, one of those two. I couldn't quite get it 120, I just wasn't strong enough on the straights. I was losing a lot of time there, so unfortunately I had to balance the AI. So into the right hand side, we're getting pushed wide into Poggio Seca. I did make some ground, but unfortunately shoved straight back down to 18th and just barely ahead of my teammate. Ricardo Rossi, but into the left-hand side. Look at Who was that? Who was that on the CMF Moto cutting the full apex? Someone's been sent to the distance. This is your typical Moto3 race, ladies and gentlemen. Yellow flags are out already as we go into Casanova, and hopefully we can make that move on Jose Antonio Rueda for Savelli, but it didn't quite happen. But my goodness, what a start. Already up to 11th, so that's seven places gained to the early stage of this Grand Prix. But what the hell was going on on that first lap? Riders were just cutting corners, they were getting pushed off the track. Just ridiculous. So we have Farioli behind us, and I'm going to try and avoid him and start attacking Ruedo. Got a KTM triple here, a trio, should I say, from Farioli. Oh, massive bump into Ruedo. Didn't actually want to go for that lunge, but he looked like he, he just stopped middle, midway through the Palagio. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but into the right hand side. Look at uh, Ayumi Sasaki going a bit deep. I think he might have had a helping hand from Jama Masia. So into the left hand side for Biondetti 1 and we attack the right hand side for Biondetti 2 with sheer anger. Just loving the entry into the second part of Biondetti. So into the left hand side for Pacine. We need slipstream here. You'll see how much speed I lose upon the straight here. We're on the Honda. And the Honda is absolutely brilliant for the straight line speed. But look, I, I just... I was going to hope to drop to power setting 2. And I was hoping that would be enough to stay in the slipstream of Onchu, the recent... Grand Prix winner, but unfortunately, it's not enough. I have to use power setting three for these long straights. This is going to be a tough job, this. Thankfully, the AI do struggle into San Donato, so I'm able to just take back a few positions, or at least temporarily, a couple of bite lengths. Tatsuki-san is now leading this Grand Prix, and he cuts our championship advantage down to 17. I still need to continue to impress Leopard Honda and impress the Honda team by beating Tatsuki-san, so we just need to keep on going. That's my track limit warning for abusing the limits before Matarasi, but now into the fourth corner. I had a sniff on Onchu, but oh, he's not... Whoa! Yep, that's the problem here in Moto3. You try for a lunge, you lose the time. The rider behind just, uh, behind just snaps your hand off and takes back the position. But look at this. Into Casanova, into Savelli, trying to get back against Onchu, but it didn't happen this time around. We're on due, the move on, on due, almost. So into Arabiata 1, and now for the right-hand side for Arabiata 2, we are closing in on the Turkish rider. Can we slip up a move up into Scarpa rear? Didn't want to make contact. But we have gone through. Are we, gonna, are we able to hold the position? We are. Thankfully, uh, on due was smarter to give me a bit of space. But with Suzuki-san still leading the way... 18 points is the differential. 1.5 seconds it is to the rider in second. So my two rivals for this career mode objective are first and second. We are down in ninth. We have to really dig down deep here. But we did come from 18th. So already this is a victory. And if we're aiming... Oh, look at that move up at the inside of Marcia. Beautifully done. He, he's going to annihilate me on this straight. He's going to absolutely dispatch me already. As we even just look up on the straight. We are able to stay with him, but it's not quite enough to get past. So also as well guys, just want to mention that uh, in the practice and in the qualifying it was pretty pretty solid, but when it came to the wet part of the qualifying too, that's when things started to go south for me. The AI are very difficult when it comes to the wet conditions and I just haven't really put enough time to learn and how to tackle the wet conditions. I felt like I found something but I'm still behind by like 1.5 seconds, so unfortunately, this is almost a damage limitations race. And if you want to be winning or be part of the championship, 
you have to remember to take as many points as possible. And that is the only objective today. Look how close Diogo Moreira was there. Rubbing is indeed racing. And we've seen it right there with the KTM on board the Honda. But breaking around the outside for Casanova. I should have the speed into some... Oh, not quite. Oh, and more contact. More contact made with the Brazilian. But he will have the inside line for Arabiata 1. Could we get him in Arabiata 2? It's not really an overtaking lunge. We did it online in the live GP. But not been able to do it on the AI. And speaking of the live GP, I've not been able to have a good race online for quite a while. Doesn't seem to be any players on PC, which is a damn shame. Well, maybe it's my times. So maybe I'm just not going at the right time. But uh, I'll get back to making live GP races when I can. But for now, I'm treating you with a career mode race, which is going to be absolutely wild as we go around the outside of Marrera. Very brave into Corantayo near the Ducati Grandstand. Maybe that's a uh, foreshadowing that we'll be there in the future. Who knows? But for now, into Bionetti 2. Suzuki has fallen backwards, or Tola has risen up for the occasion. Of course, brilliant performance from him in the real-life Moto, Moto3 this season. Winning in uh, Circuit of the Americas. And was it Argentina he won it as well? He looked damn good this season, and I think he's looking pretty good in video game form as well. So, charging out of the back straight from Bacini all the way down to San Donato, this massive straight. We do pull in a tenth of a second to Xavi Artigas. Now, was it Xavi Artigas, then, who cut the apex earlier on towards Matarasi? It very well could have been on the CMF Moto, the Chinese bike, which is basically just a... I do believe it's basically just a KTM, but rebranded or repackaged as CMF Moto. So into Luco and then back into Poggio Seca for turn three. Suzuki's holding his ground in fifth, but I think he wants to have a go at his Japanese compatriot. Look at Suzuki just sliding all over the place. What on earth is he doing? We do take over the position, and we're almost in the podium battle. But getting to that podium position is going to be one hell of a job if we lose this slipstream. I can't afford to be battling with Suzuki into Casanova here. We've got to get past, and unfortunately, there it is. Fuel limits. We're down to the uh, last couple of drops if we're not careful. So I, am I will have to drop down to second power setting, but I can't afford to. The second I drop to power setting two, I'm going to get battered. And I'm already losing time into Arabiata two. What do we do now? Do we keep it on power setting three for a bit longer? Oh, the, uh, the pressure, the stress of racing in the career mode. Brilliantly done, though. I'm, I'm so pleased that the AI is a lot more difficult in this year's MotoGP game. Because in MotoGP 22 and 21... Even 20, I guess. We would be using the first power option just to try and make this interesting. But this time around, we're actually dealing with everything. A look at that change of direction. Oh, Bionetti 2 for Suzuki. What a move that was. Yes. I'll add a little look behind me as well to say, did you see that move? <laughs> yes. What a move. If you enjoyed that one, I think that well deserves to subscribe. So if you haven't done so already and you're still enjoying the content at this point, why not hit that subscribe button? Do what the sign says. So we did lose a lot of time coming out of Puccini there, unfortunately, for getting caught on the rumble strip. Bit of uh, waving from Tatsuki-san. But alongside another Japanese rider in the form of Ayumi Sasaki, I'm pretty confident that we can outbreak these two, which we certainly do. We outbreak the Japanese pair into San Donato, and we have a 39-point advantage ahead of Tatsuki Suzuki. Looking pretty good. The gap to Algado is down to half of a second. This is looking favourable. We can start to use power setting 3 now as well. And hopefully we'll just, just get the toe. That's all I need. I'm going to do all the donkey work for the riders behind us here. Lorenzo fell on the fastest ride on circuit. Wow, that's that's very impressive from the Frenchman. A 159, 926, the only man into the 159s. What a job for the uh, battered and bruised Frenchman in real life, of course. So into the left-hand side for Savelli. This is half race distance. Will my voice go the distance? I guess we'll find out. But for now, Ortola, Artigas, Holgado, us in fourth. And Suzuki in fifth with Sasaki, Marrera and Lorenzo Fellon in eighth spot. So into the deepest breaking part of Scarperia. Xavi Artigas has made a mockery of that one, hasn't he? Oh, and then he pushes Holgado. Thank you very much, Artigas. We are closing in. Thank you, Xavi. <laughs> Appreciate it. He's done us a massive favour there as we go round the outside of Olgado. I don't know if that'll stick. I'll tell you what it did. What a move around the outside. You'll love to see it. 
into the left for Biondetti 1 and back across into the second Biondetti. Yeah, we're closing in. Oh, <laughs> from 18th to 3rd in 5 laps. Could it be a victory? Um, well, I'm not going to get too excited yet. Let's let's see what happens. We've still got lots of time. And of course, we have this dreaded straight for us to contend with. We lose way too much speed and I need to drop to second power setting because I don't have enough fuel to stay on that. But look at Xavi Artigas now. He's risen to the top. And we are the fastest man on circuit. A 159.8 for the 658 Squadra Corsa rider. This is an opportunity for us. These two can't break very well into San Donato, and I almost messed it up myself, actually. No need uh, having a dig at them when we can't get it right ourselves. But into Luco for turn two. Random off-topic mention. I'm glad they've removed those uh, rear wheel covers because they look really ugly on the Moto3 bikes. And I'm guessing it's a lot less weight on these uh, very small 250cc machines. But into Matarazzi for turn four and chucking it across into Borgo San Lorenzo. We might get close enough into Cas uh, Casanova. They do break very early for the uh, sixth corner. Not able to close in yet. But we are closer. Still needing power setting three, I would say. But I'm trying to use as much power setting two as I can now. And then hopefully for the last couple of laps, just go for it with power setting three. The only jarring thing is when the, the new feature of alerting you to a low fuel, it's very, very off-putting. And we're losing a lot of time there in Scarperia. Olgado has brought the gap down to a tenth of a second. Look at Artigas lining up Ortola. Them to a neck and neck as they go into Corintayo. Has he still got the line? Is he able to hold off Ortola? This would be a surprise, you know. This would be a massive surprise because I haven't seen Artigas in pretty much any of these Moto3 career mode videos I've done so far. But here he is, battling at the sharp end of the Grand Prix. And well, not just battling, he's actually leading it. Stellar job for the young Spaniard. So into Buccini we go. Power setting three has been activated, let's say. And hopefully we have the slipstream for Ortola. But these two are also slipstreaming each other. So it makes it even more difficult for us to chase them down. Algarve behind us is what, two and a half tenths? It was two and a half. Look at it plummeting. Look at the gap. We are getting, we're going to get battered before we even get to turn one. And here he is. Bottom of your screen there, ladies and gentlemen. The Red Bull KTM Tech 3 rider is approaching. We go very firm on the brakes. Look at us pinching it. I didn't expect Ortola and Artigas to be struggling so much, but we have an opportunity now to lead the Grand Prix from 18th position on the grid to first. Oh, Artigas! Oh, he's getting aggressive. He, he doesn't like my idea of leading the race. Okay, fine. I, I accept <laughs> that I won't be leading here into Mugello. Certainly a battle of the Spaniards at the front. Two compatriots duelling here in the Tuscan Hills of Magello. Now into the right for turn six. I'll tell you what, there's a massive train behind me. I don't even want to look behind because Lorenzo Fallon's now up to fifth. And you can see in the map in the left hand corner of your screen, there's a lot of riders all snaking their way around in Tarabiata 1. And there is Algado now. This is not over by a long shot. Anyone in this top eight could win this one. Oh, I got shoved to the distance. Algaro shoved us onto the rumble strip. Thankfully, it wasn't as abrupt or as egregious as it was in MotoGP 22 because it really sends you bouncing around there. Ride 4 was also the same issue in that corner. We're all right. We're still on board the bike and we're still pushing with all of our might. Now, I did take a small gamble with the soft rear tyre. Is that a big mistake? I guess we'll find out. I, I don't think it is because it's roughly... About on par with the medium front. It's just that it's getting warmer and the less feeling and the less momentum you're able to get from that tyre will cost us dearly into a corner such as Bacine. We've got to get it right. We've got to stay within these two because if we just get the slipstream, we'll easily outbreak them into turn one. But from this distance, I've got to do a massive lunge and it's not worth it. It really isn't. This is Diamond's Limitations, this race. I wasn't even expecting to be battling for the podium. Never mind potential race victory. Let's just go, let's go for it, though. Let's try it. We're breaking as late as possible towards those Oakley signs. A bit wide into San Donato, then we can go for the tight apex. Artigas gives Zortola a punt, and we are right on the cusp of getting into this fight. This is brilliant. What a race this has been. One of the best suggestions we've ever done with the comment section is listening to you guys about making this a 50% of 
race length video. It's more effort, <laughs> believe me, it's a lot more stressful, but it's certainly worth it when we get races like this as Ortola gets pushed off the track. Would that be a penalty in real life? They seem to be handing them out left, right and centre at the moment. Whoa! Super tight to the apex. We're closing in. If we can stay with RT Gas and he pulls us forward, we should avoid the riffraff behind his Ortola there. He's really close. I think he might get me into Arabiata too. Give him the space, I think. Yeah, let him through. I can't contend with that. I cannot fight that corner speed. <laughs> That's sensational. Brilliantly done from Ortola. He's, he's not giving up. It looked like he was dead in the water a moment ago when we came out of uh, Luco, but here he is again. Certainly not giving up. In fact, it was, uh, what was it, Bogo San Lorenzo. That's the corner where he got caught up in. I'm going to go around the outside of the Spaniard and position myself in this Spanish sandwich. Into, temporarily anyway, at least, because Ortola flew straight back ahead. But into Biondetti 1, back into the right-hand side. Of course, this is where Rossi crashed many years ago, damaging his tibula and fibula. I don't fancy thinking about that right now, but it's worth mentioning because that's uh, probably the most iconic part of that corner. And of course, the battle between Lorenzo and uh, Mar Marquez all those years ago. But I'm still in power setting 2 and I have some slipstream here. Even with power setting 3, am I able to pass him? We're just neck and neck. I can't get past him. <laughs> We're just trending at the same speed here. We can't get past, but I do believe I've got enough fuel now to stay on power setting 3 for the rest of this race. This could be massive. This could be monumental for our opportunity to race to get the race victory. So into turn one, Xavi Artigas leads by three tenths of a second. We're not close enough yet to go for it. <laughs> look at him having a look behind him. It's the worst animation in MotoGP that it's still here. No rider would ever look behind that much unless he's just full of confidence right now. Artigas getting cocky here in Mugello. Change of direction into Borgo San Lorenzo. Thank goodness we positioned ourselves ahead of Ortola there because he would have made me pay for that late manoeuvre into Matarasi. And into turn six, we're closing in, getting really tight to the apex now. If I'm not careful, if I touch the apex with Casanova, that's it, it's good night Vienna. I need to be really careful here, but I'm just pushing so much to stay within range of the Spaniard ahead. I'm going to have to... Oh, that's not good. Oh, oh we're pushing... Yeah, this is getting really scary now. We're just risking everything for a potential race victory here. I really don't need to be doing this. Artigas is not a championship contender at this stage of the championship. We're getting caught on the green now. Look at the determination. I'm just desperate to chase him down. 18th to 1st would be just incredible. Just absolutely fantastic. And this is what I want to do here today. It would be Brad Binder-esque here in Mugello. Eight tenths of a second is the gap. I don't think it's going to happen, but I, you better believe I'm going to try. I've got enough fuel to stay in power setting three now, I believe. Unless we get that warning, I'm going to stay as where we are. 49 points separates us and Suzuki. And in fact, the early race leader, Tatsuki Suzuki, is not even in the top ten. What has happened to the Leopard Honda man? What has happened to his teammate as well? No, Jamba Masu in the top ten either. But good to see teammate Ricardo Rossi and in eighth there but here comes Ortola he's had the slipstream is he gonna break us on the brakes I don't think he is this time it's us who are the last of the late breakers oh Artigas makes a mistake we oh we almost pinched it I need to fight back here we've got to get him here the AI can just pull away at any point so we've got to go for it Matarasi will be a great opportunity is Artigas having tyre trouble or oh, the weather's not looking too great either could this be a wet flag, a wet weather situation. Oh, we got the lunge into Matarasi. We've got it. Oh, pushing back. We've got the lead, but there comes Ortola. He's firing through, and now it's down to us three. What looked like a clean and comfortable victory for Artigas is now exploding between many riders with a battle for the victory. I'm going to fight back against Ortola. Have a bit of that, son. It's our lead now, 18th to first here on the final lap in Mugello. Does Ortola have the lunge? He certainly does. Artigas is going to go through as well. I can't fight back into Arabiata. I've got nothing left on the right-hand side. Oh! Almost there. <laughs> Lorenzo Fallon is now up into the top four. What is going on here in Mugello? This is sensational. I'm giving it everything I can, but from 18th all the way up to fourth. I, this has been a brilliant race, but I want that victory. Am I close enough? Heart rate's pounding now. Is it going to... Oh, big bump. 
in Talgado, gesticulation from both of the riders. Not happy with that contact as Artigas is right back where he wants to be. If you're in any situation right now, this is where you want to be. You want to be in second. You want to get that slipstream and just go for it. I'm going to go for the latest lunges ever here as we go into the left-hand side. Too tight to the apex. We bump Artigas out of the way. He's not happy with that lunge. Ortola may have just pinched this one. I'm desperate for the slipstream here with power setting three. I can't even pull out the slipstream. He's too fast. It looks like it's going to be a third place. Oh, maybe. No, across the line, it's going to be Ortola. What a race. What a phenomenal battle. I really blew it for Artigas in the final corner there. but <laughs> That was a battle and a half. Goodness me. So Ortola does take the victory by two tenths of a second ahead of us. But Artigas does take second place. So he takes the 20 crucial championship points. And very importantly, we did manage to get both objectives done there from Suzuki and Halgado. And from 18th to 3rd is nothing to scoff at. What a race. So we do extend our championship lead after losing points last time out to Halgado. We are now leading by 20 championship points. And the interesting part there is Ivan Otola and Xavi Artigas with such a great performance there aren't even in the top five in the championship yet. But rest assured, if they keep racing like that, they soon will be. So there is the team's championship. Jamamassi and Suzuki leading the way with the Leopard Racing and Ricardo Rossi helping me out in this race today. We've closed the gap down to 18 points. But guys, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching the video. I do hope you enjoy the Spin 8 super, super race. And I hope to see you in the next one very, very soon. So guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Be sure to consider joining the Dot Race Pit Crew if you want to be part of the team. And that's it from me. So thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.